Hello everyone, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Moment Science where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. In today's video, we are going to talk about the function of the elbow joint. Let's get started. So in today's video, we are going to cover the motion at the elbow joint. So we will be talking about the angles and the axis at the elbow joint and also we will cover different factors that influence the motion at the elbow joint. So first let us start with the axis of elbow joint. So as you can see over here, elbow joint is a hinge type of joint. But after research, they found out that it's not a pure hinge, but it's a more of a loose hinge joint. What does that mean? A hinge joint would have a stable axis, right? Around which the elbow joint would be moving. But elbow joint has an instantaneous axis of motion. That means the axis around which the ulna and the humerus and the radius move, the axis keeps shifting according to different angles of flexion. So to get a basic understanding, it mostly passes through your center of trochlea and capitulum. That is trochlea over here and capitulum over here, right? So it passes through them. So that is a basic idea of the axis. But as the flexion happen, it keeps moving. That's why it's called as the instantaneous axis for your elbow joint. Now, apart from the axis, if you look at the direction of flexion, right? The movement that is happening at the elbow joint will also be influenced by the direction of the groove. So if you take an example of your elbow joint, you can see that the trochlea is slightly bigger on the medial side, right? So if you put your ulna in the right position, you can see how it's angulated, right? It's not exactly vertical, but it's slightly angulated upwards. See, it should have been straight, correct? But it's slightly angulated. And that's what gives it the direction of movement, the placement or the articulation, how the articulating surfaces are shaped. That's what gives it the direction of the movement like this. So talking about the direction, if we look at the axis of your humerus and ulna, we see something called as the valgus that is an angle formed between them. So now let's have a look at that. So the valgus that I was talking about is also called as the carrying angle or cubitus varus. So if you see the diagram over here, this is the long axis of your humerus, correct? And then the long axis of your ulna or you can also say long axis of forearm. So between these two lines, there is an angle formed of around 15 degrees. It's the angle varies between 8 to 15 degrees in males and females. And if you see, females have a higher carrying angle compared to males. And usually the dominant hand has a higher carrying angle compared to the non-dominant hand. Okay. So as you see over here, this is the carrying angle. And this is majorly formed due to the medial aspect of the trochlea which extends more distally as you can see over here or if i show you over here also the medial aspect of the trochlea which goes slightly that's why this angulation is seen you see right over here as it articulates it goes slightly up now one might ask why do we have this carrying angle and a simple explanation to that would be to avoid the contact between the load that you are carrying and the pelvis or the lower limb. So you can see the legs are over here, right? So if your elbow would have been straight and if you were, if you were carrying something in your hand, the object would have hit the leg when you are walking or taking it from one place to another. So that's why this carrying angle helps us to carry different loads in our hand without obstructing our leg movement. So this carrying angle that we are talking about works the best and is clearly seen only when your forearm is supinated, elbow is extended and shoulder is laterally rotated or externally rotated, right? So that's when you see a proper carrying angle at the elbow joint. So these are the things that we have under elbow joint function. We have the carrying angle which is created by the axis between the humerus and the forearm. And then under the motion, we have the axis of motion and the joint articulation surfaces that can influence the movement. Now, there are many other things that can influence the movement at the elbow joint. So in the next slide, we will have a look at some of the factors that can influence motion at the elbow joint. So before we start having a look at the factors that influence elbow motion, first we need to have a look at what kind of motion it is. It can be either active or passive range of motion and that itself can have an effect at the elbow joint. 
What do I mean by this? A simple example will be passive range of motion at elbow will be always more than active range of motion due to the muscle bulk. What do I mean by this? So if you take elbow joint and try to bend the elbow joint right over here at flexion I can see I can go only till certain extent then the muscle right the soft tissue is not letting me go but if I relax it I can get that few extra degrees because of passive range of motion where the muscle is completely relaxed. Then the second point is BMI that is body mass index. If you have excess fat deposition around the elbow joint again the range of motion will be completely different compared to a skinny person who does not have any soft tissue between the elbow joint. Going to the next point another factor that can influence the motion is your joint position. Now when I mean joint position it's the position of your shoulder as well as your wrist and radio ulnar joint. So the joints proximal to your elbow and also distal to your elbow can have an effect on the motion at the elbow joint. A simple example again is the muscle length, right? So if you look over here, in the first example, the person has lifted his arm above his head, right? And the triceps is completely stretched. Now when the triceps is completely stretched at the shoulder joint, it is very hard for the triceps to stretch at the elbow joint because it is crossing the shoulder joint, right? It is attached to the glenoid and over here it is attached to the olecranon. So it is covering two joints and when it is already stretched at one joint efficiently, it is very hard for it to stretch at another joint. So that's what is called as passive insufficiency of triceps. Basically your triceps is unable to stretch at the, both the joints effectively and that's what can affect the motion at the elbow joint, the position of another joint in the kinetic chain. Now in the same position if you look at the biceps, biceps over here in this example is shortened because it is crossing your shoulder joint and as you take your shoulder joint into flexion the biceps is contracting because a part of biceps action is also shoulder flexion, correct? So because it is contracted at shoulder joint, it is very difficult for your biceps to create active contraction at the elbow joint. So again, there will be active insufficiency of your biceps because of the shoulder position. So the other joint positions can have an effect on the elbow joint motion. And this is the best and simple example for it. So these were some of the factors. Apart from that, there are few more other factors like muscle cross-sectional area and more points about the muscle which we will be covering in the future video of muscles around the elbow joint right so now let's jump on to the joint stability now the elbow joint motion is as important as elbow joint stability and the stability for elbow joint is achieved through your capsule bone and muscles and also the ligaments that we spoke in the previous video right so what exactly happens in extension and what exactly happens in flexion is what I mentioned over here. In elbow extension, it's a close back position of the elbow joint. Okay, very important point to remember where the olecranon goes into the olecranon fossa and the bone is locked. The elbow joint has both valgus as well as varus stability through the bone because it's locked, right? Close back position. The capsule, which is really tight. So if you take extension position over here, the capsule in front of the elbow joint will prevent humerus from going forward. So it will be packed from behind. Extension is locked by the olecranon, right? And also it cannot go side to side. The valgus and varus stability is also provided to the elbow joint through the muscles which are going around, yeah? And also the ligaments. So this extension position is a close pack position and a very stable position for your elbow joint. But what exactly happens if we move towards flexion? Let's have a look. So under elbow flexion, the flexion moment is finally limited by the coronoid process and the radial head. Okay. So as we go into the deeper flexion ranges, the radial head will go into the radial fossa and the coronoid process will go into the coronoid fossa, right? Apart from that, the stability at all the other ranges throughout the flexion will also be provided by the ligaments which we spoke about in the last video and also by co-contraction of your biceps and triceps. All the muscles around the elbow joint will contract and create a stability around the elbow joint 
and also create some amount of joint approximation that is the articular surfaces are kind of brought together with this co-contraction so that's how stability is provided at the elbow joint now let's quickly summarize the topic so first we started with the axis of motion which is instantaneous keeps changing along with the motion and the direction will be highly dependent on the joint articulation right the shape of the articulation then we saw the carrying angle that is formed at the elbow joint which is more in females compared to males and more in dominant hand compared to non-dominant hand after which we moved to the factors influencing elbow motion and these factors were active or passive range of motion your body mass index your other joint position which can have influence on the motion at the elbow joint and we also saw how the elbow joint gets stability through capsule bone muscles as well as ligaments right so with that we finish up this topic the next videos will be more focused towards the muscles around the elbow joint so stay tuned for that that's all for today guys thank you for watching